Sophomore quarterback Cole McDonald. Cole, uh, you, you were thrown in the fire today. Uh, as close a ball game as you've been in, I know the one up in Iowa Grant was close, but this one was back and forth down the final two minutes. What did it feel like out there to you? Uh, well, I really haven't been in that position before, so it was kind of new. But our coaches did a great job of preparing us all week long. We do two minute drill every single week, and that really helps. And I have great wide receivers out there to help me out. Yep, and you were finally able to find them. Uh, it seemed early on the running game was going to take you wherever you needed to go today. What changed? What did Mineral Point do to kind of shut you down? Uh, they kind of committed a lot of people up to the line. I think they had eight in the box, uh, single man out on the outside, and we just didn't capitalize on all our pass plays. But you did when you had to. Talk about the big pass. You finally found Storm Weagle. Ball looked like it might have hung up there a little bit, but he came back, made the grab, and took it to the house. Yeah, um, I saw that the safety was playing about 15 yards off of him, and Storm's really fast, and he's just a great athlete, and I knew we'd beat him. Storm, uh, you, you had to, it looked like you were waving your hands uh, trying to signal for the ball to get to you, and it did. You got it, and then you, what did you see after you turned up field? Well, I knew, I, I knew Cole was going to have the ball there. I just had to catch it and make a play, and I was wide open. I stood there. I knew Cole was going to get the ball there, and I just had to make a play to get in the end zone. defensively as well and uh, you kind of had to go from stopping their big fullback John Schmitz all of a sudden it became a wide open game and you know you're, the, the former you know offense coordinator Andy Palskill real well at what point did you think the, the playbook would open up and did you think that they would be able to execute the way they did? Uh, we knew all week that they were going to come out passing and second half they really got into our secondary but I knew we had to pull it out I have faith in our cornerbacks and safeties. You played with a lot of emotion out there. What was that like, uh, I mean, to be a leader in that way, and, and how much did you feel you had to get the, the defense jacked up? Uh, it felt good, and I knew I had to do it. You got the middle linebackers, pretty much leader out there, and we do it all week in practice, and I had faith in our guys. Our defensive line did a great job getting penetration on them, getting a good pass rush. AJ, you guys uh, had to make a key play on that uh, two-point conversion try. They've been able to throw the football without much pressure, but I think it was you and, and a couple of your line mates got in deep. Why don't you tell us what happened there and what you had to do to kind of make uh, Barrett hurry the throw? Well, we know we had to get pressure on him to try and cause a wild throw, and if we did that, we knew our secondary would pick it up and cause an incompletion like they did. The penalties and, and the miscues that you put the ball on the ground a couple times, but uh, when all was said and done, your guys performed uh, in the heat of battle quite well. M having to score and doing it, getting the two-point conversion, that was huge, and then stopping the two-point conversion. I guess at the end of the day, do you, do, you, do you say a win is a win is a win? Well, you have to today. There are many things that we need to correct, but uh, we did some really nice things. Not only you talk about the two-point conversion, they had a fourth and about two on our 40-yard line or so, and we were able to make a play there defensively and, and stop the run, which was huge and gave us a good field position. Uh, you know, if they choose to punt there, we could be back on <coughs> our five or ten-yard line. So uh, our kids made plays. We made a couple of really uh, – with big mistakes in the secondary. <laughs> we let guys go twice with miscommunications, and uh, it cost us dearly. So uh, we have to make those corrections, but uh, we did a lot of good things, and we just have to find them on the film and make the corrections where it need be. Yeah, and, and post game there, it's, that's one of those hard huddles to walk into. What do you, what do you say to the kids who just laid on the line for two quarters? Um, we, we did everything we could do in the second half, I think, to win the game. Um, some, some big plays happened both ways. In the end, Darlington made <coughs> at least one more play than we did, I guess. Um, and congrats to them. There were two things we talked about on last night's show that uh, you pinpointed as really you know, being slow to develop here in your first year as the pointers coach. Defensively, you, you had some issues early on. It sure seemed in the third quarter you made a statement that a lot of those have been corrected. Yeah, and well, Darlington had a lot of success trapping us in the first half. We stayed in a base 43 look. 
Uh, our best adjustment was to go basically to a 43 slide, which is a 44 look, and go cover three behind it, which put an extra man in the box, extra linebacker. And, and that definitely solidified our run game, our run defense, and forced them to pass a little more than they wanted at times, which was to our advantage. And the other thing was, in the wing tee offense, the, the spread wrinkles you're trying to implement, you know, you said that, you know, maybe not quite there yet, but it sure seemed in the fourth quarter when Nolan Barrett had to throw the football, everything seemed to work. Yeah, and as the game wore on, the first half, we didn't pick up and deal with the blitz very well. They blitzed us pretty heavy. And at halftime, we talked to our, our personnel, recognized pretty much cover zero, or at times cover one with the safety rolled to one side or the other. So all we had to do was talk with Nolan and make sure that he read where the safety was, throw the opposite way. Um, also, they didn't react to motion very good out of the backfield. And a couple times had some breakdowns there. So as, as we're going along, my quarterback is definitely reading things much better. Um, he had identified the open receiver very quickly, I thought, today in the face of a, of a pretty tough blitz. Well, it was a Nolan, why don't you tell us what, uh, what did you have to do to get your team back in it? Well, uh, you know, to get back in it, we had to, we had to regroup and we had to, we had to get in our heads and get it together. A lot of the times we started to lose some composure and we just had to get in everyone's head and say, you know, we, we got this. I mean, and we, we showed it there in the third quarter, the fourth quarter that we can, we can play. So. I'm going to ask you about the touchdown passes. The first one, Ulrich, uh, did you think he had just snuck on the field from the sidelines as wide open as he was? <laughs> well, I don't know. You know I, was, I was wondering about that. I was like, is that a 12th man down there? But, <laughs> no, uh, we, uh, we talked about it on the play before. We did the exact same play, and uh, Coach Paulskill noticed that the, the cornerback would, would drop out and Tarek was wide open, so he told me, look for Tarek, and sure enough, he was open. So. And then you, you, same thing happened with Pode on his uh, touchdown catch. It was kind of wide open, but you had to thread the needle on the last one, and uh, and that was a huge play. And I'm going to bring Andy back in here, too, to, to comment on this. But sure. when, when it, you can first comment, uh, Nolan, but the decision to go for two, obviously you'd like to get out of here with a win. And uh, a year ago, Cambridge came in here in the postseason and had the same kind of mindset. Uh, first of all, you're, any surprise that uh, Coach signaled for two? No, you know, I mean, I know Coach Paul Skill's a, a risky Risky guy, but I think he, uh, I think he knows what he's doing. So I, I trusted him, and I trusted me. It's just, you know, some things, things don't go your way sometimes. So. And Andy, well, let's have Andy just sort of explain what was going through the mind. And yeah, talking with the kids in the huddle, I kind of he hawed a little bit back and forth, <laughs> and then I, I just kind of decided if we're gonna go for the conversion, which we had to do one way or the other, we were gonna lose going for the win. I didn't want to have a block going for a tie, so we sure. decided, hey, if we're gonna win this thing. We're going to go down swinging. If we get it, we get it. We win the game. If we don't, 